A world of relativity and subjective truth, laws reign supreme. They can't be refuted, but simply repeated and applied. We bend to their absolute truth. The law of motion, the law of gravity, and the laws of nature. But in a land ruled by laws, where do theories fall on the canvas of facts? The Big Bang Theory, String Theory, the Theory of Evolution. And are we doing society a disservice by teaching theory as law? We're exploring that and much more here on MANA as we analyze the scientific evidence for the existence of God. It's a timeline diagramming the universe starting with a burst of energy funneling out with an expansion in all directions. On the extreme left edge sits a focal point. However, it was a scientific belief just 50 years ago that the universe was eternal and to have a start was too close to creationism and too close to the Bible. However, that scientific belief was refuted with the echo of the Big Bang Theory, proving that there is in fact an initiation point. Now, we must tend with these quantum fluctuations on that far left edge of expansion. So our universe is constricted by the laws of nature. And that is where the Big Bang Theory falls short when it comes to the scientific community, because the laws of nature state it is impossible to create something out of nothing. The late and great scientific mind of Stephen Hawking will only go so far as to acknowledge a God particle for this initiation, but not God himself. But this is why the Big Bang Theory is not Big Bang Law, nor the theory of evolution, for it's a possibility, but not probable yet it lands in the same realm of the string theory with multi-universes. However, it has been theorized that you can potentially create something out of nothing if you have the laws of nature, quantum fluctuations, quantum physics, and the law of relativity at play. And here are the laws of nature. One, they are not physical, for they need to act on the physical needing to predate the universe. So the elements of the law of nature say that they aren't physical, but they act on physical. Our universe is made out of three elements, time, space, matter, and slash or energy. And how does a biblical definition for a God hold up in the face of the elements of the universe? Let's start from the beginning, Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Where does time fit in? Right there, in the beginning. Space, God created the heavens. And matter and slash or energy. God created the heavens and the earth. All three elements right there in the first verse of Genesis. Even so, we can observe that our funnel for the universe and the echo for the Big Bang Theory behaves in the same manner of expansion and initiation of a sound wave. It is a funnel with a beginning, and if we were to make a three-dimensional diagram, expands outwardly in every direction from the initial focal point. This mirrors the historical record of creation with God speaking the universe into existence with his word with a sound wave initiation being the Big Bang 
If we return to our WAMP diagram, outside of the funnel is not space, for inside of the funnel is the vacuum of space, which is still something. No, outside the diagram is nothing. Our ability to imagine nothing is outside of the capabilities of our thinking because it's not space as we view when we look up into the night sky. For still, that is something. Being acted upon, constrained and constricted within the margins of being something. That's our universe. And this is nothing. And God himself is also made up of three elements of his own. He is all-knowing, all-powerful, and everywhere. Omniscient, omnipresent, and omnipotent. That is time, space, matter, and slash or energy. For time, space, matter, and slash or energy to be created, it must be acted upon by an outside force that cannot be constricted nor constrained by the same elements by which it is currently creating. This force must stand outside of time, space, matter, and slash or energy in the nothingness. Again, we cite the biblical definition for God. God is eternal for he is spirit and cannot be constrained by time. God stands in the past, present, and future all at the same time, being unable to be constrained by space. Finally, God is an eternal, all-powerful spirit. Therefore, no energy is created nor lost, but simply repurposed, all coming from his being, having no limits, and he stands in nothingness outside of them all. The same can be said about the theory of evolution, for the scientific method states that it must be observable and repeatable. While Darwinian evolution argues for a change of kind, much like dogs being canines and cats being felines, yet all we have seen are adaptations and speciesisms where bacteria are becoming other types of bacteria. Birds having genetic adaptations and mutations to become different species of bird, yet still bird, not a change of kind. So in the land of laws, I do not have enough belief nor blind faith to believe in the Big Bang Theory nor the theory of evolution, for I don't need theories. I need laws that abide by the scientific method and fact. If you want to read more about the information being presented in this video, two books I will refer is first, I do not have enough faith to be an atheist and the case for Christ. On this episode of MANA, we explore the evidence of a Christian God by the elements. But next, we will be exploring the science and psychology of the supernatural next Monday. We'll be investigating the psychology of worship, faith, sickness, healing, prophecy, addiction, prayer, horoscopes, zodiac signs, porn, and the psychology of renewing the mind. Finally, remember, God is holy and Jesus has come to save us from our sins and ourselves if we repent and believe. For Jesus will return soon to judge us for he grants us either eternal life or eternal damnation. So Lord, forgive us of our sins and baptize us with your Holy Spirit so we may be born again. Thank you for watching the Blessing Report with our new show, Manna as we look into Christian apologetics. We're exploring faith in the validity of the Bible through science, mathematics, history, logic, and fact, and all things reason. So imagine if Jesus narrated the Discovery Channel. If you'd like to support The Blessing Report and our show, Mana, you can give monetarily by joining our Patreon or giving a donation, or you can also like, subscribe, and comment on our YouTube channel or leave a review on our podcast. Make sure to return next week on Monday where we have more explorations into Christian apologetics and click on our playlist and the next videos on your screen. Thank you for watching. Thank you.